So, plant mix, are they only a new healthy trend more, or is there something else hidden behind its history? According to our research, the older explicit references to the term plant milk dates back to the old Roman Empire. Marcus Gabius Apicius, in the 4th century of the Common Era, wrote a compilation of recipes from all parts of this empire Mesopotamian, Old Greek, Iberian, uh, German, etc. And he explains, for example, that plant meals were quite common. He talks, in fact, about lacte nuchis, what in Old Latin means milk from walnuts or milk from nuts. He also talks, for example, about lacte ilius arboris, milk from plants or trees. Later, in Catalonia, 1324, 14th century, Libre de Saint Sobi was a cooking compilation, very famous because in that era it inspired later to cooking books of many countries in France, in England, uh, Italy, Scandinavia, etc. And Gibre Sansovi has many recipes with plant milks, and we outline or we highlight the manjar blanc, what was a soup made with uh, almond milk. In England, 1390, also 14th century, we have the forms of curie, what means uh, in Old English the ways of cooking. It was written by the master chefs of King Richard III and it's uh, a compilation of 204 recipes. I've gone one by one in this old book and from 205 recipes 45 recipes use plant milks as basic ingredient. They talk about hazelnut milk, they talk about almond milk, even about rice milk. Later, in uh, the 18th century, they also talk about plant milks, but not from a cooking uh, point of view, but from a medicinal point of view. For example, Gervas Markham, Markham, he talks about almond milk mixed with some herbs and says that it's very good for the fever or the um, doctor and uh, physician. Uh, Nicholas Culpepper, in his Complete Herbal, says that by breathing the seeds of cucumbers, we can obtain a milk similar to almond milk, literally, he says this, and that this is very good to uh, recover our uh, liver. Yeah, let's go now to France. Uh, Le Viandeur de Tavellant is probably the most uh, famous medieval cooking book in France. Also, Le Cuisiner François by uh, Pierre de la Varenne and many more. They also talk about plant milks as basic ingredient for cooking. In Scandinavia, 13th century, near Copenhagen, they found in a monastery an ancient manuscript called uh, Libellus de Arte Cochinaria, what means uh, the book of the art of cooking. And you open it, and in the first page, the fourth recipe is how to make almond milk. But you continue reading, and you find more recipes with plant milks. Now, let's go to Italy, 15th century. Master Chef Martino is the number one cooking reference from uh, Italy that inspired later the Napolitan cooking collection to Battista Platini and many other cooking books. He, for example, writes about cooking rice using almond milk or about making a soup with hemp seeds and almonds. <laughs> In 
Spain, for example, leche de cacahuetes in Zaragoza, 17th century, or leche de semillas de carabaza, uh, the, what means the milk from peanuts or the milk from uh, pumpkin seeds. They were very popular and they were also called leche, what in Spanish means milk. Arab culture, when in Europe we were uh, into the inquisition, into the barbarism and ignorance, they were the leaders in uh, all type of arts like architecture, agriculture, medicine, poetry, etc. And they also had a verb to, uh, that was, uh, was named like istahlava, that means to extract milk from seeds. Imagine, eh? this is perfectly explained by master also author uh, Charles Perry in his history of Arab cookery. If now we jump to North America, year 1899, we, have, we are complete fans of a woman called Miss Almeda Lambert from Battle Creek, Michigan. She was vegetarian, she was very religious, and she was an adventurer. Uh, and uh, she wrote a marvelous book called Guide for Nut Cookery, where our super Almeda Lambert explains how to make at home almond milk, uh, hazelnut, macadamia, pine nuts milk, uh, tiger nut milk, etc. And also how to recycle the leftover pulp. But most importantly, uh, Miss Almeda explains also how the missionaries coming from Indian lands uh, in the 18th century, they were explaining that uh, native, Indian natives, were able to bruise seeds and to filter them, to emulsify them at the end with some very rough and archaic tools, but uh, in a very efficient way. So Native Americans also used plant mix because at the end the technique of emulsifying the seeds, what is crushing them and then filtering them, uh, how they did it with, with mortar or with a stone, they crushed the seeds and with a, with a cloth, muslin cloth, cheese cloth, linen, cotton, they filtered later these smashed seeds with water. And this technique was very known from the ancient times, from the ancient times. For example, master author, uh, Terence Scully explains perfectly, among other authors, uh, plant mills were very common in, uh, in many different times of humanity. Uh, why? Very easy. For example, in Europe, all Europe was a huge forest. So even if in some places nobles and uh, kings didn't allow people to go uh, and uh, gather their nuts, People did it. They needed to, to, to feed their families. And people went to the forest and gathered nuts and gathered seeds. And then they stored them at home because nuts, you can store them one, two years. And if you know the technique of doing your plant mix, you can do it whenever you want because let's go back in time. There were not fridge, fridges in that era. So animal milks, were very difficult to conserve. You need to have the animals, you need to take the milk completely fresh after boiling it. And if you didn't, many illnesses uh, were transmitted by these animal milks. So of course, animal milks were very used, but plant milks were the other alternatives because many times people didn't have money or anything to change, to exchange for oil or for animal fats to cook at home. So what they did is just cook with the plant milks. And also during the Lent, in the fasting period, they couldn't drink or eat any food coming from animals. So this was another very useful resource. 
In fact, we know that uh, nobles and the kings in the courts, they used very exotic nuts that they imported from the Mediterranean. But uh, families, uh, normal families, normal people used local nuts like chestnuts, like walnuts, like hazelnuts, whatever what you had available in, your, in the forests of your area. And at the end, the important point we want to highlight here are basically two. The first one is that plant mills have, be, have been very, very used along human history. Uh, and the second one is that the name given to them was not almond beverage or rice beverage or coconut beverage, no. In all different languages, in all the manuscripts, they talk about milks. So what we find finally is that the milk has two origins. One is the animal origin and the other one is the vegetable origin. Very importantly, all these milks coming from plants and seeds and nuts were made at home. And it's very curious that if we come back to the 21th century, once again, the um, homemade plant milks have almost disappeared. In fact, many people do not even know, and we don't even know, neither did I before started investigating about this, that uh, plant milks were so common and so popular in the old times, no? And uh, this is because we are like colonialized by industrial versions of everything, packaged, sterilized, etc. But the truth is that plant milks have been made at home during thousands of years. So, plant milks, are they a new healthy trend more or is there something else hidden behind its history? Now you have the answer.